Alrighty, so this is my second take. First one, I hit this stupid button and recorded and then stopped, whatever. Anyway, um, so um, this, with the Chevelle on the lift, my ceiling is 118 inches outside of the beam, but the hood sits underneath the beam anyway. So uh, figure 118 inches is my ceiling height, so it's just under 10 feet. Um, and with me here, it's not so bad. As you can see, I'm about to hit my head here. Now, if I go under here, of course, I'm gonna kind of have to stay a little sort of low um, when I'm underneath like the trans and, and the motor, but as I move a little further back, I can stand up a little bit more freely, um, kind of work under here. Um, this is the taller of the two cars that I have. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. If you have a taller ceiling height, you could probably get it up another click or two, which you would be able to stand under here pretty freely. I'm only five foot 10. So, um, you know, your mileage may vary, but I find that it, it's awesome to have. It's way better than sliding around on cardboard. So even if you have like a ceiling limitation, you know, it's better to have this and have to squat a little underneath it. Or even if you had to sit around on one of the little roller stools or something, still, light years better than dealing with um, sliding on cardboard and jack stands and all that sort of malarkey. Um, so like I said, with the Trans Am, um, I can bring this up another couple of clicks and I find that it works, it works excellent. Now, um, a couple things about this setup is uh, the beam placement in your garage, if you have one, you know, you're gonna have to keep that in mind where that's at and how you park the car, because as you can see, I have to park it where the hood is underneath. Um, I could actually raise this up a little bit more, probably another click and it'll be really close to the ceiling or my little antenna up there will probably hit the ceiling. Um, so I might have to do, um, you know, a little profile antenna or something at that point uh, to get it up another click, which would make it a little easier to get underneath. Um, what I do too um, is I mark, depending on which cars you have on here, um, put a little tape um, where you can line up. And so I got two right now. One is TA front raised. That's actually when I have the Trans Am up, up, up here, uh, the front wheels off and I have it raised up. Um, I usually can bring it up to this run and be fine and not hit anything. It's also the same mark for my Chevelle. Um, since it is a little bit taller of a car, I kind of drop it there. If I had the TA on the lift, I can bring it, and it's just sitting on regular like how the shell is, I can bring it up to this rung here, and if you can't tell, that's about where my head is. So um, when it is raised up to the top location, um, I can freely work under there, standing straight up, and not having to hit anything with my head or anything. It actually works out really, really well. Um, you know, with the Chevelle, it, it, that, the, the, the piece that's about to hit the ceiling is the antenna. Um, I can get a lower profile one probably and get it another click up, which would probably put it somewhere around here. And it'll, that, that'll make it a little easier for when I'm underneath it. Like I said, not the end of the world. Um, it is just something you have to consider uh, when, you're, when you're putting in a lift and measuring and all this other stuff. Um, my ceiling is not the tallest. If you have taller ceilings, more power to you. It's gonna make your life um, a lot easier to work on it. But like I said, I would rather have this configuration with nine, nine foot, 10 inch ceilings than, than no lift and have all the ceiling height in the world, if that makes any sense. Probably doesn't, but you, you see what I mean. It's better to have it um, with some minor ceiling limitations and have to deal with jack stands and sliding on cardboard and all that stuff to make it work. Um, if you get this from Greg Smith Equipment, which I recommend, they're out of Indianapolis, take the drive down there, pick it up. They'll knock like three or 400 bucks off of it because they're not paying for freight. And then you can get it straight to your house. Um, I installed it by myself. It wasn't too bad. I had a couple buddies help me get it off the uh, trailer. Um, and I used an engine hoist and a couple jack stands. It's one of the pictures in, in, the, in the thread that I posted. Um, it actually works really well that way because the problem is, is you got to suspend both of the runners in the air so that, don't mind me, uh, both of the runners in the air so that you sneak the, the two uprights, the fronts and the rears underneath both. And then you basically drop the runner on top of the cross beams here and then bolt them in. You got to do it at the same time, um, you know, or at least have both the, the, the left and right runner suspended in the air um, so that when you sneak these in, you know, you can bolt it together. Because else what will happen is if you bolt one end up and then the other one's still on the ground, you got to try to get it up and over the top or, or in sideways. And it's just a huge pain in the ass. But if you have a couple jack stands and, um, you know, you can get it raised up enough and 
uh, maybe an engine hoist to kind of do the other the other side, you should be good. You can probably do the same thing with just uh, you know a total of eight jack stands, two on each end um, for each of the ramps. So two here, two there, two there, two there. Not bad. Um, I don't have mine bolted to the ground either. No, my the my, my industrial strength toilet paper. Uh, I don't have mine bolted to the ground. Um, it does wobble a little bit when I lower the car down, but I find that this is stable. It's not gonna go anywhere once it's up there. I can fuck around with it and it'll be fine. And I've been under yanking on stuff and I've never felt unsafe about it. Um, you could go that next step of bolting the things down, but the problem is, is that you, like, you'll probably get a four post that has um, the little creeper wheels, uh, the casters. And um, if they bolt it down, then you have to unbolt it, put the caster wheels in there, and then you can move it around the garage. So I find that I do move this thing around a little bit. Sometimes I bring it in towards the center. Sometimes I, I, I usually leave it over here. Um, but, you know, it, that's a flexibility thing that you're going to have to figure out. I don't think that it's too much of a burden to just leave it, to, to leave it unbolted. And I don't think that it's dangerous to the point where I feel unsafe working under here. And if, it, if I did feel unsafe, I wouldn't be working under it. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope this helped. This is probably a little longer of a video than you probably wanted to see on a, what is today? Sunday. So our Saturday, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, um, let me know if you have any other questions. I'll try to give you some answers. Take care and good luck.